And I want to talk to you on the subject, is there such a thing as absolute moral truth? I know we touched on that last week. You know, If you were here last Sunday, you know my answer to that is yes, there is such a thing. But what I wanted to do is dig a little bit of a deeper foundation, all right? My job is to build a foundation of the Word that you can build a life on. And so that's what I'm doing today. And so I don't want to just explore that question. I want to also answer this question. How did our culture at large get to the place where we are you know how did we ever reach this place where so many have a moral relativism and then i want to answer the third question if there is absolute moral truth what does that mean for me today and in in my life let me tell you we live in an area where the question of absolute moral truth is under intense attack we live in a culture that increasingly doesn't believe that there's any difference between right and wrong. Biblical morality, are you hearing me today? How many of you know there's morality in the Word? Come on. Biblical morality has been replaced by moral relativism, all right? And the list of social issues with the moral overtones that continues to be debated in our culture, it's continuing to grow. People are divided. And the debate, they debate over the following topics. And all of these topics are, are moral issues. Issues like, is abortion right or wrong? Is it okay for the government just to let people die and not offer them treatment when that's available to them? And what about euthanasia? You know, people who aren't productive in society. And is an open marriage okay as long as if all the adults are all consenting? And is homosexuality right and wrong? And many, many other such, uh, uh, you know, uh, items like that. And the list will go on. And let me tell you, all of those issues that I spoke of are issues of morality, right? Are you tracking with me? In a recent Barna research study conducted at a university campus, about numerous random students were asked this question. They were asked, do you believe that there is an absolute truth that is true of all people at all time? And the responses went something like this. Truth is whatever you believe. There is no absolute truth. If, this, if there were such a thing as absolute truth, then how could we know what it is? And unfortunately, that study reflects the attitudes of many Americans today. Other studies have shown that 91% of people in their teens today don't believe in absolute truth. And 66% of adults in the United States of America don't either. Instead, most people believe in an existential concept of truth, right and wrong has become subjective, reduced to someone's opinion or personal perception. So let me ask you this question today. What should you believe as a Christian? And are you able to back up that belief with the Word of God. Come on. Are you understanding just how important this is? Because let me tell you, our world is going to go in a downward spiral as long as people continue down this path. And let me tell you, it needs to be, is there an absolute moral truth? You need to be saying, well, yeah, I heard my pastor say that. Let me tell you something. That is not enough. Come on. It's not enough that that's my opinion. You need to know what the Bible teaches on this subject. So I'm going to jump right in here, and we're going to get a grip on a huge cultural debate that our society is looking at. Number one, is there such a thing as absolute moral truth? Obviously, I believe that there is, and I believe that that truth begins and ends with God. Now, obviously, what I share from this pulpit comes from the Word of God, right? Right? But before I give you some verses to understand and to look at today, which I'm going to do in just a moment, I want you to know that even logic, tell your neighbor, logic is good. Even logic dictates that there is moral, absolute moral truth. And obviously there is such a thing as truth, right? Tell your neighbor there's such a thing as truth, right? Because gravity is truth. It doesn't matter how 
how you want to debate it, how you want to look at it. You can try to deny the existence of gravity. It doesn't matter how convinced you are, my friend, how many mental arguments you make that there is no gravity. If you step off of a 60-story building, you're going to go plunging to the ground, and you're going to learn the truth that gravity does exist. Come on, are you with me? But what about moral truth? That's a little bit harder to get your hands around, right? Moral truth tells us what is right and what is wrong. And if moral truth is to be absolutely true, it has to be absolutely true at all times in all cultures all over the world. Are you tracking with me? And logic says that there are unquestionably things that are right and wrong in people's minds. Even those who answer surveys saying that they do not believe in absolute moral authority or moral truth, meaning a set of right and wrongs which transcends society and culture. The truth is that even they actually believe. So are you with me, ready to put your thinking hats on today? We're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Are you ready to think this morning? All right. Okay, so just imagine with me that an atheist is burglarized, all right? He does not believe in God. He doesn't believe in the Bible. He doesn't believe in absolute truth. But guess what? Someone came into his home and took his stuff. And the atheist comes home and he finds all his stuff taken and his belongings scattered everywhere. Guess what? He is outraged, right? He calls the police. He calls for a full investigation. He wants the crooks caught and prosecuted. Why? Because he believes they did something wrong. Am I right? Who told him it was wrong? Was it the police? No. He knew it before they ever got there. It was down on the inside of his heart. He knows that it's wrong for someone to take something that belongs to another. So he believes at least in some type of moral authority. Are you with me today? Now let's go a step further since someone might argue that you know, this, there's a legal criminal matter and, and that you know, there's authority over the issue, the criminal law and law enforcement. So let's just take a look at another example. How many of you are tracking with me today? Wave at me if you're still with me, okay? Let's say that the same man's trying to get a job and someone else applies for the job and he tells the employer all kinds of untrue, negative, bad things about this atheist gentleman. And somehow he finds out about it. A man is going to be upset. How many of you think so? He's going to be outraged. He's going to be angry. He's going to be furious at the person who told those things about him. Let me take it a step further. Let's say the same atheist is today watching the Super Bowl. All right. It's a ball game. And he sees the umpire make a bad call. And we hope there's none of those today. Come on. And he leaps to his feet and he complains vehemently because the umpire did not call the play in the way that it should have been called. Why is he so angry? Because he says the call was unfair. He acknowledged what he's doing. He's acknowledging that there's right and wrong. How many of you are tracking with me today? In fact, this same man would acknowledge many such rights and wrongs which are inside his heart and mind. So here's the question. Here's where logic comes in. Let me ask you this question. Where do those laws come from? How does that man know that it is inherently wrong to lie? How does he know that it's wrong to take things which belong to other people? I'll tell you how he knows it. It's down on the inside of him. So even logic tells us that people have a sense of right and wrong. There is a sense of morality in every single human. And you say, well, pastor, where does that come from? Let me now give you the biblical answer. How many of you are ready for the word? Come on, what do you say? Bring it on. I'll tell you why. That every person has that sense of morality. It comes because you and I, every single one of us, were created in the very image of God. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And it goes on a little later to say, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created 
created him, male and female. He created them. I want you to hear what I've got to say today. In every single culture around the world, no matter how far they stay strayed from biblical truth, there are always some degree of the moral laws of God written in the very heart of the people who live in that culture. Let me tell you why. Because they were all created in the very image of God even though we're all a part of a fallen race even though we stepped away from biblical truth even though we maybe even don't even believe in the Bible we don't even believe in God I'm here today to tell you that there's a little bit of morality down on the inside of everybody because God's image is inside of them come on can we give a big hand of praise for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords even logic tells us that absolute moral truth exists Pretty good preaching, Pastor Bob. All right, all right. Okay, excuse me for just a moment. Amen. Let me go on. Not only does logic tell us that it exists, but all three persons of the Trinity have revealed themselves as truth. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Truth comes from God and originates with God. He's the creator of the universe, the designer of all mankind. And God the Father has revealed that He is the truth because Isaiah tells us the God of truth. And what did Jesus say? Most of you can quote this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on. No one comes to the Father except by me. Another verse talks about Jesus and says He was full of grace and truth right absolutely and as we look at John 16 13 we know that the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth so what I'm trying to tell you that God is the inventor the creator of truth because that's who he is God is absolutely true in fact did you know this that it is impossible for God to lie now that ought to make you happy that ought to make you shout a little bit. That ought to make you get, get a little bit of glory down in your soul. Because let me tell you something. He's not lying about saving you. Come on. He's not lying about forgiving you of your sins. He's not lying about heaven. Come on. He's not lying about the promises. He's every bit true. He's faithful and true. Come on. Give him a big hand of praise today. And so not only does logic tell us that there's absolute moral truth and the fact that God is truth. But God's revealed word states that there is absolute moral truth. Psalms 119 and verse 160 says this. Now, I don't think I've ever preached this verse until now, but I like it. The entirety. <laughs> tell, me, tell your neighbor the entirety. The entirety of your word is truth truth and every one of your righteous judgment endures forever think of the extent of that verse what it means to you and me all of the word of God from Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1 all the way to the book of Revelation it's all true and his judgments are true God's word is true Jesus gave this astounding statement in his prayer in John 17 and verse 17 he said sanctify them set them apart by your truth and then he made this declaration your word is truth I don't know about you but I don't want to build my life on a bunch of false assumptions I don't want to build my life on the philosophies of the world I don't want to build my life on what the newscaster says hello I don't want to build my life on what's popular what's in vogue what's here today but gone tomorrow let me tell you something I want to build my life on the everlasting truth of the word of almighty God because that's a foundation that will not be shaken the word is true. Second Timothy tells us that all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And I love the last phrase, for instruction in righteousness. To be instructed in righteousness means uh, that, that, that it's to be trained or to make one understand which path they should go down. What is right? What is wrong? How you should live. Oh, I'm just here to tell you to, uh, all today that God is good. All the time. All the time. 
God is good. Come on. God is so good. We started looking at that in Sunday school today. I don't know. We read about six or seven verses how God is good right in class today. God is so good. God is so kind. God is so wonderful. God is so loving. God so has your best interest at heart. Oh, that he wrote it all down and he put it in a book. Come on. So that we might know how to live. So that we might know how to walk in this world. So we can have the best life possible.